Hi, I'm registered dietitian and chef Abby Gelman, and today we're going to talk about batch cooking. So batch cooking is a little bit different than meal prep. With batch cooking, we're trying to set ourselves up for a month or two months or three months or in some cases more so that we're going to grab our food. It's already mostly done. So what does that mean? Let's start here. Muffins are a great way to batch cook. So you make maybe 12 muffins, 24 muffins, 36 muffins. You're basically taking a recipe and you're multiplying it, you're batching it up, and then you freeze everything. So for example, I would take this blueberry muffin, I would wrap it in plastic wrap, and then I would do that for all of them and then put them in a, an airtight freezer container or a resealable freezer bag, and then label and date that bag. So we know what's in it, and the date that it went in there. And then you can grab each muffin individually anytime you want. Another great thing to do that way is veggies. So you can chop things that you use as a base for a saute or soups or stews, like carrots and celery and onions and peppers. You just chop them up yourself. You put them into a freezer bag you date it and label it with what it is. And then when you're going to make that super stew or that stir fry, you already have your vegetables chopped and ready to go. Another wonderful thing is whole grains and beans and legumes. So here we have quinoa. I could make this entire container of quinoa and then portion it out, label and date it, and then put it into the freezer. And then for three months, I could have one to two portions of quinoa anytime I want, all ready to go. The same is true for oats. So in this bag, as an example, this is all steel cut oats. So what I did was I took an entire container of steel cut oats and I cooked the whole thing and then I put it into muffin tins. So half cup portions of cooked steel cut oats went into muffin tins and I froze them that way. Then I popped them out of the muffin tins put them in my bag here, which I labeled and dated so that I know it's oats that I made in September. Also, these are lentils, same thing. Beans, same thing. All of that works great. And if you do it in individual portion sizes like these containers here, you'll always have what you need for the amounts that you need. Also great with batch cooking is chili, soup, stew, braised meat and poultry anything that has a liquid that you can portion out. So each of these containers has two um, servings of chili. They're labeled, they're dated, they'll go into the freezer. And then next week when I want chili, I have chili. Next month or two months from now when I want chili, I have my chili. So you're taking recipes, you're batching them up, and then you're splitting them out into portion sizes so that you have them for the long term which might take you a little bit more time up front, but then you're saving so much time down the line and you always have food available that you wanna eat, right? So there you go. Once again, I'm chef and registered dietitian, Abby Gelman. This was our talk about batch cooking. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.